that did 51 stock and is now doing 56. We can adjust how much air is coming in the carburetor. This is our throttle cable. More air, less air. The idle is right here. I'll tell you to adjust your idle. The idle and throttle cable are the exact same shaft. So really, that's only one thing. Your idle and your throttle. This is controlling how many RPM you want the engine to run at when it's sitting there idling. This is controlling how many RPM you want it to run at while you're driving. So we're controlling RPM by letting air in to the carburetor. So there's some adjustments that are more critical on a CV carb because that needle is blocking the main jet in the down position until this is raised. And this is not gonna really raise until the engine's running and the demand for fuel goes up when you give it throttle. So to get your bike to idle and run good at idle, you're gonna be working with the idle jet or the pilot jet, the slow jet, there's many names for it. So the main jets here, that's your big one we always see that people talk about. That's um, one third to full open throttle. You've got your pilot jet or idle jet. And this jet is controlling your bike when it's idling. And because it's a CV carb, it's also controlling it just off the throttle stop. Maybe we'll say um, 116, 18 throttle, somewhere in that range, maybe 116, a tiny bit. It's controlling it until that main jet starts working when the needle's raised. You can, uh, you can do different size jets, um, but it's really just controlling idle and barely any throttle. But we can adjust it with the air idle screw, and that's right here. We'll get to that in a second. Next to that jet is the, you'll see some, some have this little jet right here. It's an enriching jet. This is where fuel is going to be picked up whenever your demand for fuel is more because the engine's cold via the electric, we call it electric choke. It's an electric riching jet. And uh, the bike does that, the computer knows. It's going to add a little more fuel. We control that jet with the air idle mixture screw which is right here. Let's do what? Let's break it down. We've got a screw on the float bowl. That drains gas, that does nothing. That's not an adjustment. We don't care. You may not have a screw on the float bowl. You may have one of these, where it uses the uh, cable that hangs down with the uh, drain screw on it. You've got no other screws, except for that idle screw. So really, it's gonna be the only adjustment on your carburetor. And that's your air idle adjustment screw. But you may find you have this kind. There's your air idle adjustment screw. It's under that plate right there. If you have one of these, we're going to take it off. This plate will come out. You can drill it, run a wood screw in there, pull on it with some pliers. Power to the people. So here's that adjustment screw right here. And uh, what does it look like? It's got a little spring in it to hold tension on it. And it's just a needle. And that's going to let in more or less fuel. Turn it in to make it uh, leaner. Pull it out to make it richer. The life of this screw, it should live between one turn out and two turns out. Ideally, one and a half turns out. If you're having to turn it out more than two turns because you need more fuel, that means you need a bigger idle jet. If you have to turn it in more than one turn, it means you need a littler idle jet. We're turning this to adjust the idle. I know I said idle is adjusting that's right here, but uh, that's how many RPMs we want our idle at. This is adjusting our idle. So with the bike running, start with a nominal value of one and a half turns out on this screw right here. Seat the screw down in there. Get it where it's, you know, not super tight, but just, you know, seated. And once it's seated, turn it one and a half turns out. 
start your bike. Now it's idling, start turning the screw in. One quarter turn, wait for a little bit. A couple of seconds, that idle will change. It'll either increase or decrease. If it increases, that's good, turn it in some more. So uh, wait for another increase, and that's good if it increases. If it doesn't, it stays the same, try turning it in some more. And the idle is going to drop eventually, it's going to drop. And when that idle drops, that means you've got too little fuel in there, so you want to bring it back out to that other setting that was last. From there, turn it out. Your idle should either increase or decrease. Keep turning it out until it decreases. Once that idle decreases, you know you found that sweet spot right in there where the idle is at its best. And your idle may be way off now, so you'll have to go back over here and adjust your idle screw to set the RPM you want because the RPM is going to change as you do this. But we're looking for our highest idle on this. And it's important on a CV carb because when you first crack that throttle, you're still on this. So if you're cracking the throttle and your engine's dying, this could be too lean. So you're still on that. With the smoothbore carb, when you crack that throttle, you're pulling the slide up and you're getting that needle out of the way of that main jet. So she'll still run. But this is an important adjustment here. The other adjustments you can make, and this will help with your 0 30 times, this will help your uh, initial takeoff, your acceleration, right off the throttle stop. Um, that's when you're just right out of the gate. It's not going to give you top speed, it's not going to make it idle better. Um, but this is the, uh, the needle position. How low it sits down in the main jet. If it sits lower, it's leaner. If it sits higher, it's richer. That's a little Phillips screw down inside there. Pop that out. Little plate comes out that holds it. And here's your needle jet. There'll be washers underneath it and stuff like that. Sometimes they come out, sometimes they don't. Just make sure they go back in the right order. Um, this one's got a little washer below it. But there's a clip right there. This clip allows you to change positions of this needle jet. It makes it sit higher or lower. This is going to greatly improve your 0 to 30 times. So you can adjust it and play with it and get a better or worse situation. Try it down here, see if it's sluggish or crisper on the takeoff, try it up here. Usually lean, but see how low that's sitting, it's sitting all the way low. Someone's got it all the way down. Um, that's actually good. A lean mixture is real crisp and takes off nice. So you've got this as lean as it will go. If your needle, if your clip was down here, it's as rich as it can go. That means the needle's sitting higher in that slide. So uh, we'll play with that, and we'll adjust our 0 to 30 to try to get that dialed in. We'll play with the uh, main jet, and we'll get that top speed dialed in. And then we will play with this just to keep up with what we're doing here. In addition to having the uh, cap over the adjustment screw here to keep you from tampering with it, they're also going to have these anti-tamper screws on the bottom that look like rivets. You can pop those off with, uh, twist them off with vice grips. You can grind them off with like a Dremel. You can actually grind them down to nubs. The bowl will come off and you'll have these little studs, but you'll have to get uh, different screws to replace them with. That's the only bummer about the stock carburetor is they don't want you working on it. But it's a, it's a fine carburetor and uh, it's worth going to the hardware store and getting little screws once you get the studs out to match them up with and uh, reusing everything. You sit through my boring carburetor class here's how to tune your carb I do a little bit backwards I got my jets lined up all I care about right now is the main jet as long as my bike will start and run I'm just gonna tune it for top speed I'll catch everything else later so I've got my main jets lined up so the jet that's in there would go here these would be smaller and these all get bigger I'm gonna put the next jet in there the next bigger one and see if I get an improvement in top speed. If I do, I'm going to try the next one and see if I get an improvement in top speed. If I do, I'll go to the next one. If I don't, I'll come back down to this one. I'm going to get my highest top speed jet. If I, Once I found the main jet that gives me the best top speed for how my bike is set up now, then I'll go in there and adjust the air idle screw and then I'll work on the 0 to 30 with the needle position. So I'm just doing a quick carburetor jet change. 
I'll uh, drain the fuel right there. I'll leave everything hooked to the carburetor. Leave the uh, fuel line. I'll leave the throttle line. I'll leave it all on. Leave the uh, choke on. Just undo it. Get rid of the filters. It'll pop out of that little gap. Flip it over and change the jet. All right, next size bigger main jet going in. And, uh, definitely feels too rich. I'll show you what that feels like. Takes off good. crazy jet in here that's my homemade jet um, I actually drilled that to a 115 just because I only had a 110 and then my next one up was a 120 so I wanted to see if I could get an improvement but I did not so um, we'll be stuck at 56 miles an hour till the next mod and um, but at least we got a good carburetor class out of it and you're gonna get to see a really cool trick we didn't uh, break that fuel line there's still fuel in there in the filter. The only thing that's empty is a float bowl. Take the gas that you drained out. Suck it up into this syringe. Backfill it right up into the float bowl with the drain hose. Pinch the hose off, put it back on. Boom, it'll start. But so the day's not a total waste. Let's uh, adjust the low end jet and uh, try to work on that zero to 30 time and do a speed run. Gotta improve on something. Set the idle where we like it. Somewhere, somewhere in there is good. Yeah. Go down here. Adjust this uh, air fuel mixture screw, turn it in, wait a little bit, no change, turn it in, there's a change, turn it in some more, see how it's getting lower? Back it out till the RPM gets at its highest. Hear how it increased? Back it out some more. It increased some more. Back it out some more. There it goes down right there. So now it's less. We'll go back into that. Now we'll go back and adjust the RPM. No big speed improvements today, but boy does it run good. Um, when I was doing the air filter mod, remember I couldn't get the bike to run with the air filter, so I just grabbed a main jet out of the drawer, a bigger main jet, and uh, threw it in there to get it to run so I could compare the two positions. And I must have just happened to grab the right size jet because uh, everything I went up on was too rich. For the last speed run, 56 miles an hour, the uh, 0 to 30 was 4.4. wanted to improve that. And then the 8th of mile was 13.4, which is pretty good. So I uh, just got back. forgot to uh, record that speed run. And turn my camera. I got to turn my camera on. But uh, I got it on the thing here. So 57 miles an hour. We actually increased to 1 mile an hour. I don't know why. Um, I told you that shouldn't make any difference adjusting that air rattle jet and needle position, but uh, I don't know. But the 0 to 30 got it down to 4 seconds, that's good. And the 8th mile down to 13.2. So we did show some improvement.